If you're trying to lose weight and want a tool that can help you with your goals while improving your health at the same time beyond what you would get with weight loss, then you should definitely stick around as we dive into the latest science and the beginner's guide on intermittent fasting. We're going to go over the basics of what intermittent fasting is, how it works, and finally, how to customize your own protocols with the same philosophy I take for my clients so that you can create a program that you can stick to and actually achieve long-term results. If you're the type that wants more in-depth studies and cited research, we have them covered in their fasting science series here or referenced throughout the video. If you have basic questions about doing your own fasting in general, they're probably going to be covered in our fasting Q&A series on the same channel. My name is Joe Guevara and I analyze the science and research behind fasting, nutrition, fitness, and longevity. The sponsor of this video is Canadian Protein. More on them later in the video. But for now, let's talk about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting in the scientific literature is actually called time-restricted eating, which I think is a better name for it because it's simply that. You're narrowing down the time you're putting food in your body so that you can spend more time in a fasted state, which primarily through autophagy is how science is increasingly discovering health and repair mechanisms that seem to be essential to our physiology that we've largely eliminated due to cultural and social norms. Now, by itself, intermittent fasting isn't about cutting calories. However, if you want to lose weight, you need to do just that. It does, however, naturally help with fat loss through a few mechanisms, mostly in how you're controlling the hormones in your body that impact your eating habits. So let's take a look at a few examples. Number one, the amount of food you eat per meal during intermittent fasting is typically restricted because you get fuller faster through physical fullness but also an increase in the hormone leptin or the satiety hormone. Number two, the hormone that spikes your hunger, ghrelin, is also better controlled when you don't eat, especially once you've been doing intermittent fasting for a few weeks. It takes a while to adapt, so you might feel hungry when you normally eat, but over time that slowly disappears until it goes away completely, since your body is always adapting to a natural rhythm that you control when it comes to either sleep, food, or activity. Personally, I've been eating OMAD or one meal a day 99% of the time for three years now and no longer get hungry at all during the day while staying very energized and still able to build muscle at the gym. Number three, you accelerate the reduction of the hormone insulin. Now, insulin is normally a great hormone if you're trying to put on weight or muscle and you're doing a lot of exercise. But while there's insulin in your bloodstream, your body will always prefer to burn glucose for energy if it's available, which means you're not burning your fat stores while both insulin and glucose are around. So the longer you're fasted, the longer you're going to have a reduced insulin level and the longer you're going to be in a greater state of fat burning for fuel. Now, besides the weight loss effects, many people, including myself, do it for health benefits, especially after you've hit your goal weight. There's a whole other kind of fasting called extended fasting, prolonged fasting or water fasting, which is when you don't eat food for longer than 24 hours, where you'll see the health benefits in autophagy significantly increase the longer that you're in the fasted state. I actually have an illustrative chart on my website that shows the timeline of what happens in your body based on different hormones fasting benefits according to the most recent research that you can download for free if it helps motivate you. I'll link to it down below in the description. Now, some find extended fasting extreme because of our current societal norms, but a lot of recent research on fasting, autophagy, and disease, along with fasting clinics around the world, use this to not just lose weight incredibly quickly and safely, but it also helps mitigate or even cure some diseases. Not to mention, fasting has been used as medicine or even a nootropic throughout recorded history as far back as the times of Plato and Aristotle, as well as every major religion. We'll be making a separate beginner's guide on extended fasting in the future, so subscribe to the channel if you want to stay notified of that and enjoy more science-backed health and longevity content as well. I do already have some videos related to extended fasting research since the science has shown over the past several years incredible benefits to type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, and many other metabolic diseases which I've highlighted in my Autophagy 101 video, including the cited research with it. But back to intermittent fasting. How do you do it, and more importantly, how do you do it effectively? So generally when I take my clients on this journey, my ideal path is to start with what you're doing right now, map out what the optimal state is according to science, and then figure out where the ideal or realistic state is with your unique life and situation being considered, which is usually, hopefully, somewhere between those two points. 
This usually means starting from three to five meals a day and then shortening it based on what you're capable of doing, taking into consideration both your social and more importantly, environmental circumstances. Some of the variables in this can be your motivation, your hunger, your environment, etc. These are some of the most important things I have to understand with my clients to make sure that you have a consistent and sustainable program, which to me is the most important factor to effectively achieve any actual long-term sustained weight loss and health benefits. So let's give an example based on what's optimal and highlight the two principles according to the research, the latest of which comes from a study in the journal Endocrine Reviews from intermittent fasting researcher Sachin Panda in 2022. This includes impacts for both health and weight loss that'll help you figure out your own sweet spot. Principle number one, when should you actually eat and fast? According to the research, you should be eating no sooner than one hour after you wake up, but you need to have your last bite at least two to three hours before you go to bed, even longer if you're an OMAD or have a very heavy final meal. And principle number two, what kind of eating window should you do? Well, survey says, as short as possible. While eight hours or 16-8 intermittent fasting is typically thrown around as the standard, I actually learned recently from a human podcast that the eight hour time frame wasn't established because it was considered optimal, but because the grad student who was responsible for feeding the mice in the study had to be home because his girlfriend forbade him to stay in the lab longer than eight hours. So definitely don't take the 16-8 time frame as gospel just because that's what the research is focused on. Ultimately, your optimal protocol by these definitions would be where you eat one meal, all of your calories, during a late breakfast in a one to four hour window. And that's it. You then only drink water, coffee, and tea for the rest of the day until you go to bed or non-caloric sweetened beverages if you choose. However, these might trigger your hunger, so just be aware of that. Now, for most people starting out, the thought of eating only one meal is mind boggling. Ah, oh, what do you mean? I can't do that. You're crazy. And don't worry, I get it. Not to mention, you also have social commitments, you have work, you have food around you everywhere, and everyone has very different relationships with food, which is the reason that I believe flexibility is fundamental to any weight loss program. The key mind shift here is that you shouldn't assume that if you don't do optimal that you're somehow failing. Again, the goal is not optimal. The goal is consistency and sustainability to the principles you're trying to achieve. And I'll reiterate, it's narrowing down your eating windows and lengthening your fasting windows. The alternative, if you're too strict with these things that I've seen way too often, is that you don't achieve the arbitrary goal you've set, and then you yo-yo and binge again down the road, taking two steps back from where you were even before. And yes, I am also speaking from experience here. So take those two principles and work your way back from it. Ask yourself question number one. How early can you manage for 80% of the time to eat your last bite before you go to bed? Maybe you start off having an early dinner as your latest meal, and when you don't have social engagement, maybe move it up a bit. Remember, be flexible, but find something you can be mostly consistent in. Then ask yourself number two, how few meals can you manage to eat in a single day? If your final meal is dinner, can you manage to skip both breakfast and lunch and just have a snack before dinner? or maybe have lunch and dinner, but push out lunch later in the day. You have to see what works for you. Again, if your life calls, flex to it. Go on that lunch with your BFF, but the next day, maybe push out your actual breakfast later in the day. As long as over time you're consistent in pursuing those two goals, a narrow eating window and an early last bite of food, you're ultimately going to achieve success. Some days you'll have a four hour eating window and maybe some days you'll be at eight. That's perfectly fine as long as you're consistent with the attempt long term. Over time, you'll progress more and more and maybe you start off with lunch and dinner with a snack in between. Then maybe down the road, you get rid of the snack completely and eventually you're down to just a super late lunch and an early dinner to get down to a four hour eating window. How far you go and how fast you do this is up to you. But keep in mind, it's not a competition. And I'll reiterate that intermittent fasting is a tool, not the goal. Your goal is to find a protocol that you can be consistent with and something that you can sustain that ultimately allows you to reduce your calories over an extended period of time. If you can't do OMAD, that's perfectly fine. Ultimately, you're still getting benefits if you're not doing optimal. And more importantly, you're living your life. So lastly, if you do all this, what can you expect compared to just trying to cut calories, period? 
Well, according to studies, when people do intermittent fasting and are prompted to eat whatever they want or ad libitum, you're naturally going to eat less compared to calorie restricted diets when you're eating all day. The mechanisms are thought to be the hormonal responses I mentioned earlier in the video. However, while this can help, it's still worthwhile tracking calories to make sure you're at a rough calorie deficit in addition to doing resistance exercise. This will make sure that you're supporting both your health, your short-term weight loss, and your long-term calorie burn by improving your basal metabolic rate. While cardio can help you burn fat immediately and admittedly faster than weightlifting, resistance exercise pays you dividends for the rest of your life. For weight loss, Think of this as burning a few extra calories every single day without extra work because of the extra muscle you're putting on. Finally, I always like to say you can't outfast a bad diet. Make sure you pay attention to your macro and micronutrient intake. Get sufficient protein and limit your carbs even a little bit if you're trying to lose fat. And when it comes to dietary fat, it's perfectly healthy besides trans fats, but it's very hard to control exactly how many calories you're getting since it's so energy dense. Many people can also further accelerate fat loss if you end up going keto, but only if that's sustainable for you as well. On the flip side, if you're trying to recomp or build muscle, then carbs will help you push your lifts higher. And as long as you're training with intensity and not overindulging on low nutrient carbs like sugar, candy, and energy drinks, then you can still do a recomp where you build muscle without gaining too much or any fat while doing intermittent fasting. Protein, though, is still the most important macronutrient whether you're trying to lose weight, maintain, or build muscle. And one of the best and cheapest ways to get the highest quality protein, especially with food prices the way they are today, is grass-fed whey protein isolate, which is why I partnered with the sponsor of this video, Canadian Protein. I've been buying my protein, pre-workout ingredients, and creatine from them since 2015, so I'm absolutely stoked to be partnered with them for the channel because they're so focused on quality with their products. They only carry certified and third-party lab-tested supplements, so you know they're high quality compared to the stuff you might see on Amazon or retailers. And they also sell in bulk, so you can get prices similar to or even better than Costco and Amazon, and they have free shipping to both Canada and the US. Not to mention, their protein tastes absolutely amazing. Even better than Optimum or Premier from Costco, which used to be my favorite before I found CP. As a Rehash Fitness viewer, you'll help support the channel if you visit this link and buy your supplements from them. As a bonus, I'm also working with them to get you guys a 15% off discount off of your first order, so the code should be in the description below once it's up. Let us know in the comments below if you have any other questions about intermittent fasting or anything else health, fitness, and longevity related. If you like this kind of content and are new to the channel, then definitely check out our fasting science playlist for a deep dive on the most recent research and the studies. And I'm also super excited to announce that after being asked by some viewers that if you need personalized coaching, I've finally started opening up virtual coaching slots on my website, rehashfitness.com, so you can book weight loss or fitness coaching sessions directly with yours truly. Otherwise, if you've watched this far and enjoyed the content, Please do like and subscribe since it helps the channel immensely. I primarily post here on YouTube, but also on social media at Rehash Fitness. Again, my name is Joe Guevara, and with that, I hope you all stay curious, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you all in the next one.